Hello and welcome to The Sacred Art of Joking, which is a book and a blog and a vlog, a YouTube channel and a podcast. Thanks for joining me. And this time we're looking at something that uh, has come up quite a lot in lots of interviews that I've done for the book recently, especially with Christians, is Christians have a hard time imagining how the Bible is funny, but also can be presented in a way that is funny, that isn't doing violence uh, to the text or, or sort of doing jokes off the Bible rather than bringing out the jokes that are in the Bible. And so um, in one of the chapters of the book, I talk about how one of the, I think the reasons for that is how not only are we not really expecting to laugh when we go into church, or we're certainly not expecting to laugh when we hear the Bible read. One of the reasons for that is because we... Um, we don't prioritise Bible reading. The public reading of scripture is not something that even evangelicals who really like scripture think is something that uh, is worth doing or can be done. Or um, And so churches typically, of all traditions, spend a lot of money on music and there's an expectation that professionals will be involved and uh, or at least amateurs will be professionally trained at some point. Um, uh, but with Bible reading, you, you just have a rotor and whoever's turn it is gets up and reads, reads out a bit of the Bible. And then the poor preacher has to preach based on on that reading. So I think we're missing a trick there and that Christians could do a lot more to bring out the comedy in the Bible. Because when the Bible is well read, um, one of the most noticeable things about that is how funny it is. So, um, you know, it's not funny everywhere, but there are lots of jokes, there's lots of repetition, there are lots of moments, and also the reactions of the people you can start to bring out, of the, of the people reacting to extraordinary things happening, and I will have an example of that in a moment. But there's a wider point here that, it's interesting, isn't it, that um, Shakespeare plays, Shakespeare comedies are actually quite hard work to read, and they don't necessarily read all that funny, but in the hands of decent actors, they can actually be uh, really, really funny because the the sort of humanity is injected into them. And um, yesterday I was talking to um, Colin at the Church of England newspaper and uh, he was saying it's a little bit like Hansard where you, you read what was said in the chamber but you don't really read the tone or the, the, the atmosphere of the room or all those sorts of things. That's all missing and therefore you have to kind of inject that back in. But, um, but yeah, so it's like almost the... We, we've sort of had to desiccate the words to put them down, and then, but we then have to rehydrate them afterwards. We have to rehumanise them uh, rather than merely uh, throwing uh, dried products at people. We do need to, um, uh, to do a bit better than that. So what I hope to do briefly now is just to sort of show you what I mean, um, because when you start to dig around in, in, the, in the scriptures, you find that there are moments and bits that are, that are funny that you can be thinking about if you are publicly reading scripture and if you're looking to see what sort of ways in which uh, that can be done. Um, <clears throat> so I've actually got a Bible here, um, which is a good start, an ESV, and I'm just going to turn to one of my favourite chapters in the whole of the Bible because it's funny, um, and that's John chapter 9, and it's about where Jesus heals a man who has been born blind. Um, and I won't do the whole chapter, uh, I'll do bits of it and I'll, I'll read out bits but also talk about it as we go and I hope that you find that uh, useful because I'm not changing the words um, although I will sort of comment on it as I go but these are the kinds of things that you could inject into something that is um, that is already funny just as an example I'm, uh, I'm, I'm using an already funny bit in my view but lots of people would disagree with me so you can make up your own mind you can leave a comment below and and find out if I'm onto something here so John chapter 9 <clears throat> says this as Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So I'm already struggling to read it because the Bible looks like that and that is not an easy text to read from. It's not like a play script um, but I'm doing my best and Jesus has just said I am the light of the world which is one of his kind of uh, more famous bits. But then he does something quite odd and you can imagine the disciples sort of looking at him quizzically so we can move on to that in verse 5. Uh, verse 6 it says this, having said these things 
he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva. And then he anointed the man's eyes and the mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Wow, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, so he's doing a very weird thing. Jesus could just touch him or say a word and he would be healed. But he's using mud here. I don't really know why, if I'm honest, but hopefully the sermon will explain that later on. I love the fact that it says anointed the man's eyes. Now, anointing is something you do to a king with oil. And yet here is Jesus anointing eyes. So these are the kinds of things you can bring bring out. And it takes a little bit of work. You, you have to read it through a few times, maybe the day before. Uh, but let's let's move on. The neighbours and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? And some said, It is he. And others said, No, but he is like him. And he kept saying, I am the man. So we've got a picture of the idea that they're sort of talking about him as if he's not there. And then he is sort of standing there saying, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? And he answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. And so I went and received my sight. And they said to him, Where is he? And he said, I don't know. We move on, verse 13. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been formerly blind. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? They've suddenly escalated it. Now it was a Sabbath day. Ah, Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes and I washed and I see. So he's sort of getting more and more fed up with telling this story. And that's a shorter version, isn't it? Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? Which I guess is inviting the reader to think, you know what, maybe he's not a sinner and maybe he's Lord of the Sabbath. But anyway, and there was division amongst them. Now, that's funny, too, because they were divided um, and they were both wrong. Both groups of people were wrong. So that's kind of funny. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him since he opened your eyes? And he said, he's a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind. OK, well, that's new. And had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind but how he sees, we do not know, nor do we know how, who opened his eyes. Ask him, he, was, he is of age, he'll speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be the Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents asked, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give glory to God. It's not, it's not a great way of saying it, is it? But I think that's what's the essential uh, way it should be said. We know that this man is a sinner. And he answered, whether he's a sinner, I don't know. One thing I do know, that I, though I was blind, now I see. And they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I've told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Oh, do you want to become his disciples too? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshipper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin and you would teach us. And they cast him out. Well, uh, there's a few more verses to go in the chapter, but I think we get the sense of it. I mean, that's an extraordinary thing, isn't it? There are so many uh, people saying things that can't possibly be true, but saying them with utter confidence. And this uh, bl uh, formerly blind man speaking as if butter wouldn't melt in his mouth and saying... We know that God does not listen to sinners, but, uh, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And so he's kind of puzzling it out. And there are various ways that you could read that. 
But um, my favourite line, though, is this, is where he says, um, why do you want to hear it again? Oh, do you want to also become his disciples? And they're like, what? no, no, we don't. We hate him. Um, and I wonder if there was a twinkle in his eye at that point. I don't know. But either way, it's funny and it works as a joke. So I'm not saying that you should um, uh, uh, give a running commentary as you read the text at all. Not at all. I'm just trying to draw out some of the things that are are funny. And obviously, that's a bit of a plum passage to read out, in my view, and there are others that are, are harder. But I hope that's giving a sense of what happens when you approach the text that has been written by God, if you believe that uh, the scripture is an inspired word of God. And these are the kinds of things that you'll be bringing out of it um, if you're actually an actor or a director or someone who just wants to do a really good job. So hopefully uh, that has been a useful exercise just uh, want to remind you that my book, The Sacred Art of Joking, is out now and is available is available in some good bookshops. And um, uh, please uh, do follow us on the YouTube channel, subscribe, and also on iTunes and various other places where you can get podcasts. And also look at my blog, uh, jamescarey.co.uk. That's my my website with lots of other material on it and some of which we'll, we'll put onto this uh, show at some point. But thanks very much for being with me and speak to you soon.